This evening, I wish to speak to you concerning the mystery of sacrifice. There are two kinds of sacrifice, the physical and the spiritual. The explanation made by the churches concerning this subject is, in reality, superstition. For instance, it is recorded in the Gospel that Christ said, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. He also said, This wine is my blood, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. These verses have been interpreted by the churches in such a superstitious way that it is impossible for human reason to understand or accept the explanation. They say that Adam disobeyed the command of God and partook of the fruit of the forbidden tree, thereby committing a sin which was transmitted as a heritage to his posterity. They teach that because of Adam's sin, all his descendants have, likewise, committed transgression and have become responsible through inheritance, that consequently all mankind deserves punishment and must make retribution, and that God sent forth his Son as a sacrifice in order that man might be forgiven and the human race delivered from the consequences of Adam's transgression. We wish to consider these statements from the standpoint of reason. Could we conceive of the divinity who is justice itself, inflicting punishment upon the posterity of Adam for Adam's own sin and disobedience? Even if we should see a governor, an earthly ruler, punishing a son for the wrongdoing of his father, we would look upon that ruler as an unjust man. Granted the father committed a wrong, what was the wrong committed by the son? There is no connection between the two. Adam's sin was not the sin of his posterity, especially as Adam is a thousand generations back of the man today. If the father of a thousand generations committed a sin, is it just to demand that the present generation should suffer the consequences thereof? There are other questions and evidences to be considered. Abraham was a manifestation of God and a descendant of Adam. Likewise, Ishmael, Isaac, Jeremiah, and a whole line of prophets, including David, Solomon, and Aaron, were among his posterity. Were all these holy men condemned to a realm of punishment because of a deed committed by the first father, because of a mistake said to have been made by their mutual and remotest ancestor, Adam? The explanation is made that when Christ came and sacrificed himself, all the line of holy prophets who preceded him became free from sin and punishment. Even a child could not justly make such an assertion. These interpretations and statements are due to a misunderstanding of the meanings of the Bible. In order to understand the reality of sacrifice, let us consider the crucifixion and death of Jesus Christ. It is true that he sacrificed himself for our sake. What is the meaning of this? When Christ appeared, he knew that he must proclaim himself in opposition to all the nations and peoples of the earth. He knew that mankind would arise against him and inflict upon him all manner of tribulations. There is no doubt that one who put forth such a claim as Christ announced would arouse the hostility of the world and be subject to personal abuse. He realized that his blood would be shed and his body rent by violence. Notwithstanding his knowledge of what would befall him, he arose to proclaim his message, 
suffered all tribulation and hardships from the people, and finally offered his life as a sacrifice in order to illumine humanity, gave his blood in order to guide the world of mankind. He accepted every calamity and suffering in order to guide men to the truth. Had he desired to save his own life, and were he without wish to offer himself in sacrifice, he would not have been able to guide a single soul. There was no doubt that his blessed blood would be shed and his body broken. Nevertheless, that holy soul accepted calamity and death in his love for mankind. This is one of the meanings of sacrifice. As to the second meaning, he said, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. It was not the body of Christ which came from heaven. His body came from the womb of Mary. But the Christly perfections descended from heaven. The reality of Christ came down from heaven. The Spirit of Christ and not the body descended from heaven. The body of Christ was but human. There could be no question that the physical body was born from the womb of Mary, but the reality of Christ, the Spirit of Christ, the perfections of Christ, all came from heaven. Consequently, by saying that he was the bread which came from heaven, he meant that the perfections which he showed forth were divine perfections, that the blessings within him were heavenly gifts and bestowals, that his light was the light of reality. He said, If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. That is to say, whosoever assimilates these divine perfections which are within me will never die. Whosoever has a share and partakes of these heavenly bounties I embody will find eternal life. He who takes unto himself these divine lights shall find everlasting life. How manifest the meaning is, how evident! For the soul which acquires divine perfections and seeks heavenly illumination from the teachings of Christ will undoubtedly live eternally. This is also one of the mysteries of sacrifice. In reality, Abraham sacrificed himself, for he brought heavenly teachings to the world and conferred heavenly food upon mankind. As to the third meaning of sacrifice, it is this. If you plant a seed in the ground, a tree will become manifest from that seed. The seed sacrifices itself to the tree that will come from it. The seed is outwardly lost, destroyed. But the same seed which is sacrificed will be absorbed and embodied in the tree, its blossoms, fruit and branches. If the identity of that seed had not been sacrificed to the tree which became manifest from it, no branches, blossoms or fruits would have been forthcoming. Christ outwardly disappeared. His personal identity became hidden from the eyes, even as the identity of the seed disappeared. But the bounties, divine qualities, and perfections of Christ became manifest in the Christian community which Christ founded through sacrificing himself. When you look at the tree, you will realize that the perfections, blessings, properties, and beauty of the seed have become manifest in the branches, twigs, blossoms, and fruit. Consequently, the seed has sacrificed itself to the tree. Had it not done so, the tree would not have come into existence. Christ, like unto the seed, sacrificed himself for the tree of Christianity. Therefore, 
his perfections, bounties, favors, lights, and graces became manifest in the Christian community, for the coming of which he sacrificed himself. As to the fourth significance of sacrifice, it is the principle that a reality sacrifices its own characteristics. Man must sever himself from the influences of the world of matter, from the world of nature and its laws. For the material world is the world of corruption and death. It is the world of evil and darkness, of animalism and ferocity, bloodthirstiness, ambition and avarice, of self-worship, egotism and passion. It is the world of nature. Man must strip himself of all these imperfections, must sacrifice these tendencies which are peculiar to the outer and material world of existence. On the other hand, man must acquire heavenly qualities and attain divine attributes. He must become the image and likeness of God. He must seek the bounty of the eternal, become the manifester of the love of God, the light of guidance, the tree of life, and the depository of the bounties of God. That is to say, man must sacrifice the qualities and attributes of the world of nature for the qualities and attributes of the world of God. For instance, consider the substance we call iron. Observe its qualities. It is solid, black, cold. These are the characteristics of iron. When the same iron absorbs heat from the fire, it sacrifices its attribute of solidity for the attribute of fluidity. It sacrifices its attribute of darkness for the attribute of light, which is a quality of the fire. It sacrifices its attribute of coldness to the quality of heat, which the fire possesses so that in the iron there remains no solidity, darkness, or cold. It becomes illumined and transformed, having sacrificed its qualities to the qualities and attributes of the fire. Likewise, man, when separated and severed from the attributes of the world of nature, sacrifices the qualities and exigencies of that mortal realm and manifests the perfections of the kingdom, just as the qualities of the iron disappeared and the qualities of the fire appeared in their place. Every man, trained through the teachings of God and illumined by the light of his guidance, who becomes a believer in God and his signs and is enkindled with the fire of the love of God, sacrifices the imperfections of nature for the sake of divine perfections. Consequently, every perfect person, every illumined heavenly individual stands in the station of sacrifice. It is my hope that through the assistance and providence of God and through the bounties of the kingdom of Abha, you may be entirely severed from the imperfections of the world of nature, purified from selfish human desires, receiving life from the kingdom of Abha and attaining heavenly graces. May the divine light become manifest upon your faces. The fragrances of holiness refresh your nostrils and the breath of the Holy Spirit quicken you with eternal life.